V12, also known as V12, is one of the most astonishing and fantastical machines ever created in the Soviet aviation industry. This gigantic helicopter is an undisputed masterpiece of Soviet engineering and design, with its history dating back to the late 1950s. The needs of the national economy, especially the armed forces, required the transportation of large-sized cargo weighing over 20 tons using vertical takeoff and landing aircraft. Research on the development of a super-heavy helicopter, designated V-12 or Product 65, began at the Design Bureau in 1959. Two years later, the government approved a task for the factory to develop a helicopter with a payload capacity of 20 to 25 tons. The work convinced the government of the feasibility of building a super-heavy helicopter. On May 3, 1962, the Council of Ministers of the USSR issued a resolution on the development of the V-12 with a cargo cabin similar to the cargo cabin of the giant aircraft and 22 designed by the OK Antonov Design Bureau. This helicopter was intended to transport various types of combat equipment weighing up to 25 tons, including the latest strategic ballistic missiles 8K-67, 8K-75, and 8K-82. Calculations showed that with four D-25 VF engines boosted to 6,500 horsepower, the payload capacity of the machine would reach 25 to 27 tons, and it could be presented for flight tests as early as 1963. The most likely configuration for the future V-12 was considered to be longitudinal, although the classical type like the Mi-6 was also considered. To study machines made according to the longitudinal scheme, the Mile firm provided one of the serial Yak-24 helicopters and the V-44 helicopter purchased in the United States in 1960. After studying the advantages and disadvantages of aircraft with the longitudinal scheme, Mill concluded in 1962 that it was necessary to change the layout of the helicopter and switch to a transverse scheme. The task of developing the V-12 involved its use for transporting ballistic and cruise missiles, air defense systems, self-propelled artillery installations, tanks, and armored personnel carriers. A total of about 80 different types of combat equipment. Similarly to the transport pair and 12 aircraft, Mi-6 helicopter, a combination of an 22 and V-12 was being created. The anti-aircraft was supposed to deliver combat equipment to the airfield, and the V-12 to the nearest position. Based on this, it was planned to make the cargo cabin sizes of both machines identical. Until 1964, the development of the V-12 continued actively. However, for some reason, the leadership recommended temporarily suspending work on this project for a year or two. This circumstance seriously affected the plans of the Design Bureau, and led to a delay in the testing of the V-12. In addition, Another problem has arisen, the desire to reduce the size of the helicopter led to overlapping rotor blades. As a result, the noise level in the cabin increased, and a lot of time was spent on reducing it, including choosing the direction of rotation of the blades, which affected the helicopter's controllability. As intended, the power plant consisted of two pairs of D25 VF engines. The blades were synchronized through a transmission shaft passing through the wing. Fuel tanks were located in the route and suspended tanks on the sides of the fuselage. All combat equipment was carried inside the fuselage, and a tail hatch with side flaps was used for loading. The crew compartment was two-tiered, but unlike the N-22, the pilots, flight engineers, and radio operators' cabins were located below, while the navigator's cabin was on the second level. The helicopter had a distinctive tail assembly similar to that of an airplane. The control of the rudder surfaces enhanced the effectiveness of the directional control, and the collective pitch control, synchronized with the overall blade pitch change, provided control in the longitudinal channel. 
To reduce the workload on the pilots, hydraulic amplifiers were introduced for blade pitch change or control, collective pitch control, and cyclic control. The V-12 was equipped with a four-channel autopilot AP-34B1 and a system for automatically maintaining the specified rotor speed. The pilot's work was significantly facilitated by the Lokia radar station. The first fight of the V-12 took place on July 10, 1968, and in the autumn, it was handed over for joint state trials with the customer. During flight tests, the autopilots were replaced twice with more advanced models, and suspended fuel tanks on the sides of the fuselage were installed. In 1969, the V-12, piloted by aviator Koloshenko, set seven world records, including lifting a payload of 40.2 tons to a height of 2,250 meters. According to the test pilots, the helicopter stood out for its low noise level, minimal vibrations, fuel efficiency, and good maneuverability. During the testing phase, a flight was made along the moscow arktobinsk route, which served as a rehearsal for the flight to Paris the following year. Most aircraft arrived in Paris on their own, but the V-12 could not be transported by any other means. Due to the refusal of West Germany to allow flight over its territory, given possible political tensions during the Cold War, an alternative route was chosen through Denmark, the Netherlands, Belgium, and northern France, in unfavorable weather conditions over the Baltic and North Seas. However, the crew and the helicopter successfully completed this challenging test flight. In 1972, the second helicopter was assembled, taking into account the results of the first prototype's tests. However, due to the lack of engines, it was not until March of the following year that aviator tester GV Alfarov managed to take it to the air. Nevertheless, despite the recommendations of the State Commission, the aircraft was never put into serial production. In 1974, the customer refused to accept the second V-12 for state trials, and all work on this giant tiltrotor was discontinued. The objective reasons were the removal of missile systems, for which the V-12 was intended, from service, as well as the loss of relevance for the task of mobile basing of ballistic missiles due to the development of technology and the improvement of missile systems, which became lighter within a few years. Most of the tasks assigned to this machine could be solved using a prospective single rotor helicopter such as the Mi-26. Thus ended the saga of creating the world's largest tiltrotor aircraft. Currently, the first V-12 prototype is located on the territory of the Mill Moscow helicopter plant in the Moscow region, and the second helicopter is exhibited at the Monino Museum of Military Aviation.